I think I was full of, you know, what my grandmother would say is da da and vinegar. Like I was pretty determined and I was pretty <laughs> inspired and I was pretty motivated, you know? Um, so I just talked to everybody and, you know, went to my friends and family and, um, and I just, I, I, I don't know when it came back. I mean, that was 30 years ago, yeah. but you know, it did. Um, it and if it didn't come back financially, it came back in, in knowingness that I could take it to the next step. And, um, I listened to those tapes until, you know, tapes weren't, you know, allowed. I, mm -hmm. I just started reading and studying people that thought like that, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. why I think top performance comes People are like, oh, it's so easy for you. I'm like, well, if you yeah. if you study something for 30 years, you know, if you study making a pie for 30 years, you're gonna have the best bakery in town. I mean, it just is what it is, right? Hello, 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 and welcome to the Freedom Seeker Show. This is the safe space for unfiltered conversations that matter to women. I'm your host, Yvonne Winkler, the CEO of Lotus Consulting, Inc., uh, an organization on a mission to support women's well-being through empowerment and harmony and collaboration. Um, I'm a certified Berkman professional, a mental health advocate, speaker, facilitator, author, and schnauzer mama and of course a big nature lover and our guest today is an international speaker celebrated entrepreneur number one best-selling author deb Dramon. and she is uh the founder of debdramon.com am i pronouncing your last name right there's a drummond drummond drummond, drummond. yeah yeah is that irish i'll take it Dramond. i haven't had that Dramond since, so... is more french Dramond. Yeah. <laughs> so, Deb is the founder of uh, DebDrummond.com, an award-winning independent uh, founding brand, band, brand partner, that's a mouthful, of Neora International, and she's been featured in Success Magazine 48 times. Wow. She founded Mission Accepted Media Company and hosts its uh, Epinus uh, podcast. Deborah's reputation as an incredible personal business trainer, yes, she is, is impeccable. Whether it's uh, her masterminds, which I have been uh, part of, or her private sessions, she makes it her mission to walk the path to the next level with her clients. Deb has inspired, educated, and motivated audiences of 20,000 and plus to stand to their feet and the only thing that she loves more than rocking the stage and changing lives is being a mom to her daughter, Chloe, and her son, Ocean, and Yaya, which I'm assuming is grandma, to her grandbabies, uh, Brinley and Cashton. Um, so this little dynamo here is purpose-filled to live her mission to help women show up, stand up, and speak up in their business and personal lives. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Freedom Seekers Show. I'm so excited to have you here. <laughs> oh my gosh, Yvonne, I have um, such admiration for you. This is like, this is a highlight of my day. <laughs> and today we're going to talk about a lot of those things like uh, gumption and entrepreneurial parenting. But um, and I, I give my guests always the, uh, the, the topic that they wish to talk uh, on and gumption and entrepreneurial parenting was like, it came out of Deb like this. She was like, that's what I want to talk about. So you're obviously very passionate about these two um, topics. And I can't find out, can't wait to find out why and how that came about. Given your introduction, I have a feeling there was a lot of gumption involved in your entrepreneurial journey, but let's start with uh, where are you from? Oh, where am I from? I, you know, I'm so grateful. I get to uh, say that I am from Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, because I know there's more than one Vancouver in the world. So mm -hmm. I was born in Vancouver General Hospital and have uh, spent my time in this beautiful country. Wow. So that's where I'm from. Yeah. Yeah. Born and raised, which is also pretty rare to find. You know, Vancouver is mm -hmm. a very big city. Uh, and so to have a uh, born and raised Vancouverite is, is pretty awesome. That's wonderful. So tell us a little bit more about how long have you been uh, an entrepreneur? Well, I'm about to go get a bottle of champagne and celebrate because I'm just venturing into my 31st year. Official, Whoa. like a officially, I'm going to be an entrepreneur. 
31 years, you know? Um, yeah. So January, everyone's going to be like, yay, happy new year's. I'm going to be like, Hey, I made it. <laughs> <laughs> I made it. See that what this year is going to do. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they're doing it. so so interesting, right? So, I mean, being the thirtieth year, um, I'm sure you've been doing some serious reflecting. I know you've been also very busy because you uh, you just had a major book launch and you're doing a, an Ireland tour. You have so much on the go all the time. Um, but when you reflect back on the thirty years, tell mm -hmm. me, tell us. What do you know? What was that defining moment when you said, "I'm going to be an entrepreneur"? You know, I, I'm going to do this. I'm going to carve my own path. Do you? Do yeah, you yeah. That? I could just yeah, I could describe it like I was there yesterday. There's two things that come to mind um, when you say that. And I remember I probably was about five years old, mm -hmm. and I was standing outside. So we lived in a big home, in a big heritage house. You know, now we did not have the income to have a house with four car garage, but for some reason, this house that my mom and my aunt and my grandmother and God knows who else was living in uh, with the kids and everything else had this four car garage. <laughs> you know, you got to think this was, I was born in 1964, so this is what, 1969. Um, so um, I remember standing outside of the fence mm -hmm. and I remember for whatever reason, whatever was going on, there was a little cray cray, you know, happening maybe that day. I was like... I'm going to live a different life. Like, I just, I'm going to live a different life. And I, that's it. I was like, and I just remember the word different. Now, mm -hmm. take mm -hmm. it to when I was pregnant with my daughter and I had planned on going to a four year degree of women's studies at the college and religious studies. And I, um, I had this unexpected but wanted experience because I had tried to get pregnant before, not happening. Sign up, I'm going to go empower women around the world. So I need to find out about different religions and women's studies. And I have this, you know, I went bungee jumping. And for some reason that shook things up. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're having trouble getting pregnant, I, I actually jumped off backwards. So there you go. Maybe that helped. Anyway, so I was pregnant and I couldn't do that. Yeah. yeah. And then through a very serendipitous experience, I was pregnant. I wanted a muffin. And there was only one place that did sugar-free dairy-free, gluten-free, blah, 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 free muffins. We're talking how many years ago? My daughter's 29. Um, and it was a 35 minute drive from my house. And I was like, I said to my daughter's father, I'm like, we're going. He's like, okay, hands up. So we drove. And as we drove to the muffin shop, um, I saw a pink flyer to the corner of my eye because of course I couldn't do this course. I was like, what am I going to do? Like, you know, we needed money. Like this wasn't like, oh, hey. No. So I saw this course, this flyer, I grabbed it and it was about a massage course. And I just, called and had a conversation on the phone with this woman anyways and then i went and met with this woman because i was pregnant and she was teaching holistic body work anyway she allowed me into the course and she made a small course just for me because you know it couldn't be in a big course so there was six of us in our home and the second day i was in that class my body tingled from the toes to the top of my head and i got tingles and i'm like i'm gonna do this the rest of my life i grabbed my little piece of paper and pen and i figured out if i did massage this many days this many this, I could make this much money. And I was like, done. And I did that for 27 years and healed and massaged over 30,000 clients. Wow. So it sounds like you're, uh, you're not just a dreamer, but you're also a very strategic thinker. Like you, you said, you took a pen and paper and you, you worked out right away what it is that you needed to do to, to make this viable or to make this sustainable. Uh, and 27 years later, Tell me a bit more about that, like, um, because I've been experiencing that there's few people that are uh, both, you know, can dream big and then also have the um, the methodical or technical or strategic, yeah. let's call it that, the strategic yeah. uh, uh, bones behind that. So uh, is, has that been your experience as well in, in 30 years of entrepreneurship? Um, you know, it's interesting. I think I, I knew enough to, to do that part and I knew enough to do that part. I mean, when I started, I was massaging people from my bedroom. There was a crib because the baby hadn't been born yet. Like, you know, I just worked with what I had. You, you I, made it work. I, went yeah. to, I, I made it work. You know, yeah. I definitely didn't have an MBA coming into it. And I was like, I need to advertise. I don't have any money. So I put flyers together and back then you'd go to Kinko's and if I had money, they would be color. If I didn't have money, they'd be black and white. And I'd walk up and down the streets 
that were close to my home because I thought well, that was easiest for me. And I went down a main street, Broadway in Vancouver, if anyone knows it, and I was taping flyers around the, the light poles and to the point where the city of Vancouver called me and said, please stop, <laughs> like, please stop. We got to keep taking these things down, right? And um, so I just knew that I needed to get the word out and I knew that if I got the word out and I charged you know, a certain amount of money, um, then I could make some money and our family needed money. I mean, honestly, there was a simple strategy, get the skill, get the money, put it together. And then of course you just build as you go. You got to say there was not one networking group in Vancouver for women. There was no one else to talk to, but I knew a couple of other people that were doing kind of similar stuff. And so I started the first women's networking group Sunday at two o'clock at my house because it was lonely and there was no one to talk to or help or get support. And so we just kind of, you know, and you know, it wasn't accepted by everybody. I mean, my, my daughter's father at the time didn't even like massage. He's like, no, you can't practice on me, maybe my legs. Um, I remember my girlfriend who I love dearly when I decided to do the aromatherapy home party company, she's like, no one's ready for an aromatherapy home party company. No one even knows what that is. And I was like, I think my first 20 years of success was just because I was so pissed off at her. Um, like there was, so it was really, <laughs> to prove uh, her wrong. Fine. yeah, I was like so pissed <laughs> off. Right. And, uh, it was kind of find and fumble, you know, find and fumble. Mm -hmm. And, um, I started honestly studying top performers. Um, my yeah. first inspiration was I, we didn't have any money. Oh my gosh. Her dad was so mad at me because I was pregnant. He'd come from Montreal. He didn't have a job. We were living in this basement suite, barely putting it together. When I say eating rice and peas, I mean eating rice and peas. And if it was a good week, he actually went and bought a chocolate bar for himself. That's how little money we had. And, um, I stood up, I stayed up one night and that's when, um, you know, Tony Robbins did these TV ads. And uh, there was, uh, you know, buy 45,000 cassettes and it was $300. And I took our last 300 bucks at two o'clock in the morning. And I was like, I need what this guy has. Cause that was, you know, that, in, that entrepreneur person inside me. And I spent the money. Oh my God. If I wasn't pregnant, I'm sure he would have kicked my butt out on the street. <laughs> what did, I just spent our like grocery money. Yeah. And um, that was the first time though, that I heard a fellow, anyone, talking the language that was going on in my head and my heart. So I just needed the camaraderie. And um, I remember yeah. him saying to this day, and how long ago was that? Oh, you know, that was 30 years yeah. ago. I remember him saying, you need to create something that creates money in your sleep. Well, massage didn't necessarily do that, but that was my love at the time. And I never forgot that. And I always thought, well, you know, that's singers and authors, mm -hmm. I guess, do that, right? Authors wasn't even a big thing back then, really. It's not like books didn't exist, but we didn't have the accessibility. Um, and so it was just kind of that really. And I took that big $300 leap of faith and, you know, I've, I've made my money back. <laughs> How long did that take to, to make that money back? Cause, uh, yeah, I mean, I see you took the risk and it probably, uh, I mean, $300 was a lot of money then and a lot of money in your circumstance. So, uh, did you see rewards? the reward or the quickly enough to, to keep going with it? Or was it, was it, um, was it an uphill uh, fight for a while? Um, I think I was full of, you know, what my grandmother would say is that that and vinegar, like I was pretty determined and I was pretty <laughs> inspired and I was pretty motivated, you know? Um, so I just talked to everybody and, you know, went to my friends and family and, um, and I just, I, I, I don't know when it came back. I mean, that was 30 years ago. Yeah. But, you know, it did. Um, it did. And if it didn't come back financially, it came back in in knowingness that I could take it to the next step. And um, I listened to those tapes until, you know, tapes weren't, you know, allowed. I, mm -hmm. I just started reading and studying people that thought like that, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. why I think top performance comes. People are like, oh, it's so easy for you. I'm like, well, if you, yeah. if you study something for 30 years, you know, if you study making a pie for 30 years, you're going to have the best bakery in town. And it just is what it is, right? But oh, I also so. think that I have, an, um, I have that kind of brain. Um, I have the kind of brain and people are like, I can't believe the big projects that you do. I go 30 years, 30 years. I mean, everything layers you for the next one. I'm up against two of the biggest projects I've ever done in my life. And if you don't think sometimes it doesn't keep me up at night, I mean, come on, you know. Mm, I, I, I love to pause for and freeze frame this for a moment because I think you hit on two very, very important things that as entrepreneurs, uh, we, we tend to, overlook and that is time practice 
you know, how long it takes to develop skills and get really, really good at what you do. And, um, uh, and I just lost the second one, but it'll come back to me. I, I know it. Um, and oh, that that seasoned people can have anxiety too. <laughs> possibly, yeah. Uh, that yeah. It, that wasn't it, but um, I think w let's let's lean into the one that came right back to me, uh, which is that the longevity, right? Like, mm -hmm. um, especially in today's environment, uh, there is this compare. It's so much easier to compare, and what mm -hmm. we often don't see is how the what has gone into to getting to this point, right? Uh, and I really love that you that you said, oh, this is the second. See, I knew it was going to come back to me. The second one was is that you. It's not just about money. That it was about the investment in you and your skills and mm -hmm. and in the development of uh, um, of you to become who you needed to be in order to be that entrepreneur that you are today. So those were the two things I wanted to freeze frame for everyone because it takes time. It's not an overnight thing. Uh, and you've shown us this now in several different uh, examples. Yes, you you had the mindset of an entrepreneur, which I think is something that uh, is not for everyone. Like not everyone is, is cut out to be an entrepreneur and that's okay. Um, but if you do have that that feeling as a five-year-old or as a 50-year-old to stand at the in a corner and say, you know what, I want something different, uh, to have the gumption to go for it, uh, and then uh, to understand that we need to build skill for anything and everything. It's not something that is just born within us and, and we, we just magically go out there and write books or, you know, create million dollar courses like Tony Robbins would be the first to say that it took him his lifetime to develop who he is. Same with Oprah. Like, you know, the, mm -hmm. it's, it's always the things we don't see, uh, just the end result that we're in admiration of. Um, you, uh, you've created seven companies. Uh, do you still have all seven running or uh, did you create seven and you, you let some go? Like how many companies are you currently running? Yeah. Um, so, um, I, what happened is I would create a company and then it would morph into another company or it would morph into a different branch of companies. Mm -hmm. Um, like, you know, I had the massage studio, right. And then I had like, literally, I call it a God moment scream in my ear telling me to create an aromatherapy home party company. So I created an aromatherapy home party company. I created a romantic, uh, company from that, like all about togetherness, aromatherapy. Mm -hmm. And then I created a gemstone jewelry, gem jewelry home party company. You know, I also created a education forum. So I spoke, um, you know, I taught classes, I taught massage, I taught corporately, um, I taught privately. Um, so I had products and services in the studio. Um, and so they all kind of blended together. Um, and then I morphed, you know, as I moved into um, distributing the products for mm -hmm. the direct sales company that I'm with. Then I chose to let the massage part of that go. I had it for 18, you know, 27 years, 18 staff. Um, we came up against a time where it needed to breathe. It just needed to breathe. And so if, is the website still alive out there? Yes, because I believe it's my spiritual duty to, if someone finds me and needs healing, to heal them. I had someone come yesterday. People are like, oh my gosh, you're so busy. I'm like, well, I took two hours out of my evening to massage and heal somebody and clean some chakras and because that's my spiritual duty to that work right so if i get asked to go to the ayurvedic association and talk so i think that um i have morphed some some are still there um they you know in our balanced life if you have if your balance i have a balance of my companies and sometimes it's this portion sometimes it's this portion right so um right now probably four four, five, <laughs> helping so my son the, launch his first. So the question so. that emerges from that is, is um, how do you, what's the secret to, to your success within knowing, like you, you, you're, I'm definitely hearing that you follow your intuition very much from an early age on. Um, and I also know from a practical point of view, you have to have uh, something else in your tool belt uh, to to make it all work and 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 
synchronize with one another? What's your secret? Um, you mean to be able to collaborate, um, you know, the multiple streams or the multiple Four, companies? Four, five, or six companies. Yeah. yeah, yeah, okay. So just remember, some of them are divisions of other companies. And mm -hmm. so I think if you're, so my mission and vision since I was 20 years old for my first company was to um, help and empower men and women to stand up, speak up, and show up in their business and personal lives. Mm -hmm. That has been the theme to everything I do. Because people say to me, you do so many things, and I'm like, no, I serve. Like, I serve. If you look at my podcast, I serve entrepreneurs. If you look at my publications, I serve entrepreneurs. If you look at my direct sales business, I serve entrepreneurs or people that want to be entrepreneurs. And at the heart of who I am, I am chemical-free health and wellness for 30 years. And mm -hmm. so I play in a sector, right? Mm -hmm. I play in a sector. I don't. Now, for, now, there is people that have multiple sectors, and it's the same strategy. They, you know, you take you to any project you do. You take you. So if I was selling, if I was selling picture frames, my mission and vision would still be to create the most beautiful picture frames so families can, you know, put their picture out, and I feel like I'm serving. Like that, it have, you know, what I mean. It, so yes. um, you can have multiple things. It just has to mean something to you per se for me. Other people can probably, you know, it's like you can buy all sorts of stocks and things like that. So for me, I've kept it in the same kind of sector and kept it in the same bubble. So therefore, when I change hats, which I do four or five times a day, it's the other thing, like you just, you know, you really just need to get used to changing hats. Um, and when I change hats, I take me with me. My mission comes with me. My vision comes with me. My dharma to serve people comes with me. So whether I'm talking to you about speaking on the stage whether I'm talking to you about being a sponsor for the Ireland tour, whether I'm talking to you for coming for a chakra balancing, whether I'm talking to you to be for to, to be one of my clients and we're going to work one on one together or coming into the mastermind, I'm serving you. Yeah. So for me, there's a for me that works for me as well as infrastructuring a team. Like I, I have been I'll be the first one to say that I hired someone when I didn't have the money to hire them. Like I, I had to really that's where a lot of gumption came in. I paid money for things because I needed it. I was busting at the seams and I was either going to stay small or, <laughs> or I was going to take money I didn't have and hire somebody to do something that I didn't want to do. I am constantly trying to take things off my plate. I just made an investment and hired a company to take over the, uh, some, some, a certain part of our marketing for my company, the Ireland, um, the, um, my son's company, like three businesses. And now I've got to work with them and then get them up and running. That's three months of time I need to invest. And hopefully I've made the right decision. And sometimes you don't. And sometimes you don't. Yeah. And sometimes yeah. you don't. I love that. Thank you so much for that is such great insight. And what I heard very strongly is, is, uh, you are very much rooted in, in what it is that you're here to do and um and that is to serve that i really love that distinction between doing and serving i love that that is such a beautiful um yeah that is, that is that's great and that's what keeps you grounded that's what keeps you uh keep going keep on going on yeah yeah so you mentioned your son um, and his and his company. So let's talk a little bit about par uh, entrepreneurial parenting. Um, I uh, when I must say when I first uh, heard you say that, I actually thought, okay, we're going to talk about the business as our baby, you know, entrepreneurial parenting. Uh, and then you were like, no, 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 no. I'm talking about the difference between, uh, you know. Uh, uh, being an employee and or or a consultant or you know under and being an entrepreneur and what that means as a parent so tell us a little bit more about why that is important to you and what that means to you I don't think it's as difficult now to be a parent and be an entrepreneur as it was when I was I think there's a lot less judgment because man did we ever go through it you know what I mean like mm -hmm. what kind of mother are you you know you should be home um, what, do you, what do you mean you go out and work at night? Because I owned a home party company, right? So, you know, um, I mean, I heard it all. And honestly, I still hear it sometimes. And it just makes my skin crawl. But anyways, but I think that we have 
um, women that have been entrepreneurs for a long time, whether it's, you know, 40 years, there was women before me, you know, 40 years, 30 years, 20 years, we've really laid a lot of path and broken down a lot of barriers for women to start their life as entrepreneurs, raise their family in an entrepreneurial, you know, setting and all that really great stuff. But one of the things that I wanted to share about being an entrepreneurial parent is that, look, at whether you're an entrepreneurial parent or not, you naturally get a little gift with your baby. It comes in maybe a pink or a blue or a yellow or green box. It's called guilt, <laughs> right? And But as an entrepreneurial parent, whether it was the, you know, the environment that I was living in or the community or the culture or what have you, where I should have been, you know, the one picking up and dropping off and blah, 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 which is one of the reasons why I wanted to be an entrepreneur. So I could do more of that, um, which I did. But um, sometimes things just don't look good enough for, you know, whoever. I don't know who that person is that we think is always watching what we do. But um, I just wanted to say there was some things that I really did for myself as a parent, as an entrepreneurial parent, that has been incredible. That has turned out to be some of the best things that I ever did. And um, first of all, I think it really, you know, I have a 29-year-old daughter and I have an 18-year-old, soon-to-be 19-year-old son that's launched, that's launching his first business that told me at 15, sat me down on the couch and said he wanted to be an entrepreneur. And I was like, are you kidding? Have you not watched this crazy? You wanted to be a part of this. My daughter was entrepreneurial. You know, she had two companies and then she went corporate and now she's being a mama. So the, um, what I guess I wanted to share is that there's, if you are an entrepreneurial parent, uh, first of all, it, you know, later on in years, I cannot tell you the, um, just the mindset that my kids have, you know, I, I didn't have to say you can do anything and you can be anything because they saw me cross those barriers. Yeah. They saw people literally, I had a family member tell my daughter how she was a much better mom because she gave up her career, like all of that stuff. My, my daughter, 11 years old, came home and went, mom, da 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 said this. And I was like, hmm, that's interesting. You know, yes, I made a phone call, but <laughs> how I explained that to my daughter was a whole different ball game with a straight look on my face, you know? And I think that, you know, children do watch and learn. Um, and I think that they really learn um, skills inside that are very self-reliant and industrious. Um, I never told my kids every time we barely paid rent and I didn't tell them every time, you know, um, I got a huge check either. Like what they saw was what they saw. We had conversations around the dinner time table like other people did. Our dinner table just sometimes was covered with paper or projects or, yeah. you, know, boil, you know, bottles that needed labeling or whatever it was, right? I said, I always say that, you know, my son bless his heart, right? I mean, goodness forbid that he has a partner one day that wants to wants to sit down at five o'clock every weekday and have dinner, have dinner. <laughs> because he's like, what are you talking about? Sometimes we eat on the couch, sometimes we don't, you know, like on the office floor, you know what I mean? Um, but what some of the things that I did that um, was, I think, really helpful as an entrepreneurial parent is, is tell myself that I was actually, that my kids were actually in business school watching me be in business. And what they took from that wasn't my business, it was their business, it was their observation. Um, I also, it was a really incredible way to socialize my children, that they met people, you know, we say it, I had someone say it to me last night, because we're looking for celebrities for a certain project, and this woman just knows a plethora of celebrities, she says, you know, Deb, it's still who you know, it's still who you know. And I was like, okay, great, you know? Yeah. Um, and so they got to meet people at five years old, at eight years old, at 10 years old, at 12 years old. There's people that asked me about them that if they ever wanted anything, they could go ask this person. And this person feels like they were a part of their life, even though my kid doesn't even know who they are, right? Yeah. So it really branched and built out their network. Now yeah. that my son's launching his business, like he, I'm like, hey, you've got a whole bunch of people that wanna buy some stuff. He's like, who are they? I go, they've watched you through my experience because I talk about them, but I'll tell you one of the best things that I ever did is because around finances. So every time to this day when, so my son will be here today, we're gonna go you know, get our hair done and uh, we're gonna pick some designs for his business and we're going to go to the bank. And so we go, when I go to get our hair done or out for dinner, nine times out of 10, and I did this to him always, we would go to a bank machine and I'd say, okay, so this is how much we need. So we need $100 or $200. I would take it out and i go, oh, you know where I, this money came from? This money came from that trade show that I did. 
this money came from that massage that I did. This company, you know, I have a beautiful brass bowl and I, I do healing work on people. Um, you know, have, and I put it in, it's in front of a nice, you know, it's all this little spiritual thing. And, and um, I'm like, and he knows that there's always money in the bowl, you know, and that where that money came from. And so it gave him a great sense of when he asked for something or wanted something, he realized that our money came from an actual work to the point where when I had to leave, I, I left town. You know, I went and did trade shows, right? And so I would go do a trade show. Sometimes it was five days, sometimes it was eight days, sometimes it was longer, sometimes it was shorter. But I would always leave a present for them on their pillow every single night to wake up before they before they went to bed, you know, because mom was away. Um, and every time I sold a product, like if I sold a bottle of anything, I would text home to my son. Now, my daughter at this point was, you know, living her own life. And so I'd already put her through this process. It was my son's turn because they're 10 years apart. And I would go... Go put, you know, I've got five bucks for you. Every time I made a sale, I gave him five dollars. Let me tell you, that kid was so on board with my business. If I was, it got to the point when I was going away for a trade show, he's like, You go, mom, you go, you go. Because <laughs> right? he knew he was gonna have like 10 bucks, 20 bucks, and, and he was gonna be a part of it. And, yeah. and so I made my kids part of my business, and I will do the same thing with my grandchildren. I will do the same thing with my grandchildren. And I think it gives them a sense of allowance and also an understanding, and also when times are tough, it, then it's easy, it's actually easy to explain. It's like, no, we, we can't right now. I'm I'm expanding, I just hired this, or I just did this, or you know what? That trade show didn't work out, and we just got our butts kicked financially. So there's, you know, there's no nothing for this next little while. And they got to see the ebbs and flow of life in relationship to my business, instead of me saying yes or no without reasoning. So. I don't know why I felt it was important to share that on your show. I haven't talked. I used to teach a, I used to do a lot of stand up speaking on how to raise conscious children. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, but I just, I don't know. I felt compelled when you asked yeah. me what I wanted to speak on. So someone needs to hear it. And I love it because it's not something we talk about often. And I mean, the Freedom Seeker show is all about unfiltered conversations that matter to women. And I know there are women in this, in this community who are, feeling guilt and shame about uh or selfishness because they they chosen the path of being an entrepreneur and working and uh and and what you've just so beautifully explained is is it, it may not be everyone's way of how you handled it but it was your way and this is how it worked for you and i love that because uh this might help someone in this in this community feel a little bit uh, differently about uh, not compromising herself for and what she wants from from life and from her work and and following her heart's desire because she also chose to be a mom mm -hmm. and that is what yeah. I loved about what you just said uh, it's just so um, refreshing to hear your perspective on it so I was just as you were saying that I was going through to to you know put a pretty bow on this conversation and what what's really become apparent to me is um you're yes you're go-getter but what one of the things I so admire about you is is that you you don't sit and dwell in um, lack of or um, uh, misfortune or or circumstance, you dwell in possibility. Like you dwell in and and then you figure out, okay, what do I need to make this happen? You ask the questions rather than so. I this is this just really came apparent to me, and and that's what what that's what I really admire about about you as as a woman, as an entrepreneur, as a as an fellow author as a as a speaker as, like just as a human so I really appreciate you being here and sharing your wisdom with us um, and I would love for you to share with us how we can support you um, you know we we've all got to meet uh, Deborah now and uh, um, we I'm sure you could see just from the short time we've had together how much she does not hold back uh, in delivering and in giving everything she has uh, for her, for her family, for herself, but also for her clients to achieve the, the desired outcomes and goals um, that we want. What? Uh, how can we reach you? 
what what do you got going on right now that we can we can support you on yeah absolutely absolutely thank you um well you can reach me at i make it super easy i'm deb at debdrummond.com my website is debdrummond.com um all my everything that i'm doing is pretty well on there there's a couple of really cool things one um i want to share that i have a large women's event it is the largest speakership and authorship that's ever been done in support of international women's day and i was just about to launch a book this christmas called mission accepted 262 women creatives entrepreneur media and entrepreneurs rock legacy and tell all and that was super important that actually came to me when i was about 30 or 31 years old you, you hang in this game long enough and you get to do stuff that you got told to do 30 years ago and yeah. so i was super happy about launching that on on at christmas time and then I watched a movie on Netflix called Seeing All Red. And um, it is a movie that Gloria All Red is about her life. And if you don't know it, I suggest you watch the movie. But it changed everything for me. Now, I've been a big follower of Gloria Steinem. And I never really um, knew as much as I, you know, should, I feel should have known about Gloria All Red. Um, anyways, she's a strong women's rights advocate. And after watching that movie, I was like, I need to do more. So at whatever late night it was, I called my publicist and I'm like, hold off the book on December. I think we're going to do an International Women's Day. And I took two hours out of my day the next day, which, you know, is, is you know, mm. so I took two hours out and I watched it again and I was like, absolutely. And so what we've created is all through 2023, from March 7th, which is the day before International Women's Day will be the first summit. There's 13 speakers every single month. Um, as of the next month, it'll be the 8th to represent International Women's Day date. And there'll be 11 months of 13 speakers of which any woman around the world can come to for free. If people want to be a speaker, we are looking for over 100 speakers for the pre-summit. And if you'd like to be an author in a collaborative with 262 women that are rocking legacy, which is really, and that's where the gumption comes from, um, we have the, the book that will be launched on International Women's Day 2024. Mm -hmm. And then to celebrate, we're going to do a big launch, as you know I do. And then there's eight weeks between International Women's Day and Mother's Day. I'm like, oh, no, we got we to let this party keep going on. So we've got eight <laughs> summits of eight speakers all the way. And then we do a final bookend um, launch the day before International Women's Day on May 11th which there's more speakers. So there's a massive amount of opportunity for women to speak. We've got every kind of availability um, mm -hmm. to be able to participate that we could possibly think of. It's going to be streamed on Amazon and Apple TV and Roku and 500 publications like NBC, CBS, ABC. This is the largest platform exposure that I've ever created. It is not an annual event. I just want to say that there's like 10, 10 people behind the scenes talking about hiring people out and taking financial risk to, to get on TV. We all know the deal. So um, I feel like this is a super calling. Um, and I think it's going to be very legacy and mm -hmm. um, very appropriate for uh, 30 years. Um, and um, just to be able to help as many, you can imagine, it's 375 women authors and speakers having an opportunity to tap in and the amount of women's lives that we're going to change and hopefully men, you know, we're, we know that we're going to have about 3000 people just on one book launch and I'm hoping 500 of them are really, you know, people that support women. So, um, that's a project. So if someone wants to be a speaker, if they want to be an author, if they want to just come and watch and learn, um, reach out and I can give that information. Um, and the gift that I can give back for anyone is uh, clearly I do a little bit of marketing and once a month, um, I do a class, um, it's called Innovative Marketing, where I teach people how to use innovative uh, tools. Very easy. And I'm not talking about social media. So innovative marketing other than mm -hmm. social media, because you guys all know how to do that. And if you don't, I, you know, you can figure it out. But uh, innovative marketing. And then, as you know, I've won a number of awards for acquisition. And, um, and I have a follow-up system, I believe, that kept me number one for five years in 10 countries. And, you know, last year was a big year for me. I heard the words, it's time. And it was time to give it away. And so I am doing that. And I teach the formula that took me to number one in 10 countries, 150,000 people in my company for five years in a row. Um, and I teach it. And you can come and have it for free and learn how to rock your business. Yeah. So that's what and I where, have. And where do we find that information? On your website? Or are you going to share you, the link with they, me and you, I can If they plug email, yeah. Dab at devdrummond.com if you email there. Um, and then we can, Dorothea will get you registered up for the class. 
Amazing. Oh, thank you so much for uh, being so generous and so um, with your time and your resources and your knowledge and and just your beautifulness all around. Awesome. Thanks for being here. And uh, I can't wait to uh, to see what happens for you in 2023. Uh, it sounds like we're going to be at the edge of our chairs all over again with you. Uh, oh uh, just just watching you. And when are you going to Ireland? Um, well, that's been extended as well. So okay. um, originally the plan was August and we will go there in August and we'll do a PR. Um, if anyone wants to go, they did it tour.ca. We're doing a incredible, myself and my girlfriend are walking eight and a half marathons in eight days across Ireland to raise money for those that are in the music industry, musicians, mm -hmm. people that own record stores, women in music, Alicia Keys's organization, she is in music. We're going to be funding them. If you know any woman in music, just we all love music. We all yeah. use music for healing. And I say to people, when's the last time you went and bought an album? Because 85% of musicians can't pay their rent. And Spotify pays 0.0034 cents. So I think it's just something that we use so freely and don't recognize that um, these people can't pay their rent. And so we've got these charities that we're going to be funding. So they did it tour.ca, and that's going to be going through 2003. 2024 we'll be doing the walk after the after the after, women's event yeah. is done yeah, yeah. so yeah. so June focus first on the women's event the event okay well and, we're doing and, both at the same time you, yeah. you got to do both at the same time right yeah and those are the two main projects yeah uh please uh, i'll be in touch with you after we end here and i yeah, will um, post the the links in here for anyone to participate as well so uh, thank you again from the bottom of our yeah. hearts. We appreciate you so much. And uh, I can't wait to, to see what happens for you. All the best. Oh, you too, Yvonne. I mean, good things are going on. I, I can't wait. I can't wait. So anyways, thank you so much. You're amazing. Thank you. <laughs>